you just knew it was something big because, you know, I, I can't even imagine living in San Francisco or earthquakes, but when the floor is moving underneath you and everything is just happening and smoke and as I ran into the parking lots, you know, I mean, everybody's screaming. I actually helped somebody get to a staircase that had a broken leg. There was a lot of smoke down there. There was a lot of people screaming. People came with us running up the ramps. We wanted to get help for the people that couldn't move down there. I mean, I know of people that got killed in the basement. I know of people that got broken legs in, their, in the basement. People that got reconstructive surgery because the walls hit them in the face. And I know I'm just, I just look. We have someone uh, in the area who's seen some of this happen. George Shea is on the telephone. Uh, George, uh, t tell me uh, what your vantage point is and what do you know about this place? I'm on um, West Street right out of the uh, Brooklyn Battery Tunnel. And I was driving in and I heard an enormous explosion, then I heard another enormous explosion. I believe that, uh, no, 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 I, I don't doubt that, the, I mean, the planes were there, the plane hit, hit the building, but before, and one of the experiences that I said, even when I was pulled from the rubble on 9-11, is that there was an initial explosion on the sub-level number two, B2. There were six sub-levels in the building before, prior, the plane hitting the building. And I believe that that was an explosion uh, set up by explosive to actually weaken the foundation. And nothing will ever change your mind that you think I was, was there, I saved people, I actually have the people available for the 9-11 commission, that was the commission that was created to investigate this. They were never called, not even once. They're still available five years after, and the government came out with an official story that went against our experience on that day. So the building is on fire, and I'm noticing there's, there's no police yet. There's no fire trucks, and it's been a couple minutes, and I'm not sure that they seem like really long minutes. So as I'm in traffic, and the traffic is kind of creeping up, and people are driving away, and people are getting out of their cars, I got to a point where I, I can't go forward anymore, so I had to make a left turn. Some people were turning around, but I was concerned, because at that point, it wasn't a terrorist attack. It's a, it's, an, it's a tragic accident. My friends are up there, people I work with. So I, I was, you know, I was just going with the flow, I guess, at that point. And I was between... World Trade Center 7 and World Trade Center 6 on Vesey Street. And when the, the, the South Tower event happened, um, you know, it happened from my blind side because I was on the back, I was on the north side of the South Tower. So what you see from my side is a, a big orange explosion and debris, fire and debris raining down, and I've got the top down. And at the same time, that it's registering that that's not an accident from that. I see flashes going off in World Trade Center 6, which was, you know, as you come to learn later, the U.S. Customs House and uh, the Department of Labor, and that there's a big crater that goes through that all the way down into the subway. So anyway, that's, that's Building 6. Jamie Gangel, I just want to say that some of the descriptions coming from eyewitnesses in lower Manhattan of, of these explosions occurring are chilling. One man talked about getting off a PATH train, that's a subway train. Just get out of the tunnel and the, and the blue. The and subway the tunnel? Yeah. These twin sisters, visiting from Alabama and Georgia, met in New York to share their 40th birthday. They were having coffee in the World Trade Center when the first plane struck. And all of a sudden it sounded like, I don't know where the subway is, but it sounded like a subway collision, a bomb, and it, it, it was just pounding, boom, 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 boom. and I, I literally thought the subway had exploded. And Did you see what happened? What happened? Well, I was in the path train and there was a huge explosion sound. Everyone came out. Tell us what you saw when you exited the subway station due to a lack of smoke. Eileen. Um, it was very smoky and then we exited on Church Street out of the path train station. Uh, at the time, I was actually in the subway heading towards the World Trade Center right around Franklin Street. And after the first explosion, the subway station started to fill with smoke. The subway cars started to fill with smoke and the subways actually stopped. If you wish to bring uh, anybody who's ever watched a building being demolished on purpose knows that if you're going to do this, you have to get at the at the under infrastructure of a building and bring it down. Peter? Yes, Dan. Uh, Reports that devices were found did make it to the airwaves on 9-11. And some original footage confirmed what many investigations uncovered, that some firemen began to pack up and leave just before the towers collapsed because of suspicious devices being found. Anything else you know that you'd like to add? Uh, just as I was coming out of the building, um, I heard somebody sort of ushering people away, and they were saying, you guys got to get out of here, it's bomb. 
Many thanks, Lindsey Grimm, who saw this occurring at least. It was a bomb. Bomb in another building. That was a bomb. It was a secondary explosion, probably a device either planted before. NBC's Pat Dawson is close to the scene of that attack. Pat, moments ago, uh, I spoke to the chief of safety for the New York City Fire Department. The chief, Albert Turry, told me that he received word of the possibility of a secondary device, that is another bomb going off. Uh, he tried to get his men out as quickly as he could, but he said that there was another explosion which took place. And then an hour after the first hit here, with the first crash that took place, he said, uh, there was a, another explosion that took place uh, in one of the towers here. Uh, so obviously, he, according to his theory, he thinks that there were actually devices that were planted in the building. First one and then the other. Some say after secondary explosions. And there may have been secondary explosions as well that were detonated in the building by these terrorists. Uh, his comrade was a uh, firefighter was trapped about 500 feet and under some debris uh, down West Street. And uh, he turned around and said he saw a police officer walking with him carrying a 9mm pistol. And he asked him what he was doing. And he said that... Uh, that there were people in the area that were planting bombs after the planes had, had uh, flown into the tower that the bombs apparently, and this is, this is just going on one, one, one firefighter told me, uh, police uh, believe that uh, there were bombers that were in the area after the planes hit the towers planting bombs and that that may have been what caused uh, you know, the further devastation. Um, are you still with me? Yes, we're listening to you, Joe. It's, uh, it's just unbelievable what you're telling us. Federal agencies that were down there do believe that there was some sort of explosive device somewhere else besides the planes hitting. In fact, Rudy Giuliani received this warning, which is why they started to pack up and leave the area, moving their command post. And, and several of them that I, I talked to 10 minutes, uh, 12 minutes before they... Uh, before they died, I, I was at the command post that the fire department uh, had and left them to go to the command post that we were establishing. Uh, you, did you go immediately to the Office of Emergency Management? So I, I went down to the scene and we set up uh, headquarters at 75 Barclay Street, which was right there with the police commissioner, the fire commissioner, mm -hmm. the head of emergency management. And we were operating out of there when we were told that the World Trade Center was going to collapse. Coming over our radio, get out of the area, the second tower is coming down. They tell you the second tower is coming Yes, it's about to collapse. Uh, Mayor Rudolph Giuliani walked right past me here on Church Street and, and uh, Duane Street, again about four blocks from that area, moving his entourage out of that, that region, and then just moments later was when the collapse happened. There. So people should remain calm, they should remain where they are, except if they are in southern Manhattan. If you're below Canal Street, you should walk out of southern Manhattan and walk north. Then there was all the eyewitness testimony talking about the secondary explosions. I mean, you had it on 9-11. On, on there were numerous secondary explosions taking place in that building. It was con there were continuous explosions. <clears throat> when we got down to sixth floor, there was like another shake or another explosion. Everyone started panicking, but... There was another big, big explosion in the other tower. Flames coming out in this billowing gray smoke. People still not panicking. People not quite understanding what was going on. Then somebody said that they saw an airliner go into one of those towers. Then, uh, I don't know, an hour later than that, we had that big explosion from much, much lower. I don't know what on earth caused that. Uh, we heard another explosion, and I'm assuming that's the one that came from the, the lower level, since there were two, and I said, Right, because it was like here. 18 minutes apart. Well, 
This is no the first the first explosion, and there was a second explosion in the same building. There okay. were two explosions. Okay. There. But then there were other doors that were locked, so we were brought into another floor when there was another explosion, and they finally let us continue to go down. At 10:30, I tried to leave the building, but as soon as I got outside, I heard a second explosion and another rumble and more smoke and more dust. I ran inside the buildings. The chandelier shook. And again, black smoke filled the air. Within another five minutes, we were covered again with more silt and more dust. And then a fire marshal came in and said we had to leave because if there was a third explosion, this building might not last. Three large explosions were described right before and during the time the towers came down. Work hours. At that time, uh, maybe 45 minutes into the taping that we were doing, which was maybe a half hour after, there was, uh, it was an explosion. It was way up where the fire was. You heard a big explosion before I, the building fell? I saw it as it was happening, and it sounded as if you had a hundred of those little black cat firecrackers, and you lit them all off at once. That's what it sounded like. It sounded like the finale of the 4th of July over the East River. I was about five blocks away when that, I heard uh, explosions three thuds and turn around to see the building we just got out of antenna tip over and fall in on itself trying to get so many people out then there's those secondary explosions and then the subsequent collapses all of a sudden it was like bang 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 like bullet shots and then all of a sudden three tremendous explosions and everything started coming down One eyewitness was standing among a crowd of people on Church Street two and a half blocks from the South Tower when he saw a number of brief light sources being emitted from inside the building between floors 10 and 15. He saw about six of these flashes accompanied by a crackling sound before the tower collapsed. I got uh, an eyewitness who said there was an explosion on floor 7 to 8. 7 to 8. Because of the secondary explosion, we've got tower. just a little bit. You can see right at the bottom of the of the TV station, uh, TV screen, uh, billowing smoke from a bomb or explosion. We do. Firefighter Louis Caccioli told People Weekly, I was taking firefighters up in the elevator to the 24th floor to get into position to evacuate workers. On the last trip up, a bomb went off. We think there were bombs set in the building. Nobody knew what to do. Uh, there was no clear thinking. People were just reacting to kind of save themselves and, and this the people is around them. You're in the same location when the building comes down. We made it at least two blocks and we started running. Floor by floor, it started popping out. It was like, was it, if, if they had detonated, they were planned to yeah. take down a building. Boom, 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 boom. Floor by floor, it started popping out. It was like, was it, if they had detonated, they were planned yeah. to take down a building. Boom, 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 boom. As if a demolition team set off, when you see the old demolitions of these old buildings, it My folded God. down on itself and it is not there anymore. on three big explosions. I don't think anybody was thinking the buildings might fall. We'd been told that these buildings were tested for a 707 and, and all of that. I mean, good grief. Of course, we didn't think it was going to fall. The fire trucks and the cops were right under there. As that thing started to collapse, it was when it began to come down, the, the as you've heard uh, Commissioner Safer indicate, the bomb squad was in, fire personnel, ambulance personnel had entered. About 15 minutes after they made their entry, uh, we heard a boom. I don't know if that was the infrastructure that was going or another explosion, and we looked up. 